Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. Welcome to my video series, Mastering Affinity Photo. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of the photo persona that is found in Affinity Photo. Specifically, we're going to talk about adjustment layers. And I'm going to give you a little bit of a taste of adjustment layers and what they could do and some of the more common ones that you would use. In future videos, we're going to get into adjustment layers a little bit deeper because there is a lot of different things you could do with adjustment layers and a lot of different ways they could be applied to an image. And I don't want to throw too much at you at one time. So we're going to start out a bit slow and then progressively get more um, involved and more advanced as far as the photo persona is concerned and adjustment layer specifically. Now I have this image here. I did some minimal processing in the develop persona and I have it over here in the photo persona and you can see when you look at my layers tab I have the background layer that's our pixel layer so that's the actual layer that's the image adjustment layers go on top of the background layer and they do as the name implies adjustments to your image and they do specific types of adjustments and we're going to go over to it we'll click right here where it says adjustment and you can see there's a number of different adjustment layers and i'm going to show you a few of the more common ones that i use and that most photographers probably do use we're going to start out with levels now as soon as i click on levels you'll see that this box comes up and this is our levels controls things we could do with levels and if i temporarily pop back over to the layers tab you can see there's our background pixel layer and right above it is our levels adjustment layer. So we're going to do some adjustments to that background image with the levels adjustment layer. And usually with levels, what you could do, it kind of controls your black point and your white point or what Affinity calls the black level and the white level and to some extent contrast as well. And usually the way you would adjust this is you would look at the histogram and where you have this gap on the left hand side, you would take this black level slider and you would just move it. You could see that a slider arm up here kind of moves with it. And you just kind of want to move that until it just starts to touch the peak where the histogram is starting to jump up. And usually that's a pretty good adjustment right there. And similarly, you would go down to the white level slider and you could see how that is preset all the way at 100%. And it's over here on the right hand side and we'd want to move that so it's just starting to touch right where the histogram is starting to jut up. So we just simply move that like that. And usually when you do this adjustment, it will give your image a little more pop. And what I'll do is I'll go over back, to, I'll go back over to the layers tab and I'm going to turn this layer off by clicking this little checkbox. And you can see there's before. And there's after and you can see how it just gives it that little bit extra pop now you can come in you, you, there's no like specific rule that states you have to put these adjustments right where the histogram juts up you could experiment move it around every image is going to be a little different and you might prefer one of them to be further along uh, where the histogram might start to jut up and personally I think I prefer the black level set a little more to the right. And I think I like that a little better. There's before and there's after. Now this gamma slider, that will affect the contrast of the image. And if I move it to the left, we're going to take contrast away. And you can see it gives the effect it's making the image brighter. And if I move it to the right, it's going to add contrast. You can see how it's adding a lot of contrast to the sky. But it does so in such a way that it's actually making the image darker. So you could experiment with gamma 2 and see uh, for your specific image if you like that offset at all. Personally, I don't think this image needs any gamma adjustments. Now, we have blend modes, and we're going to talk more specifically about blend modes in future episodes. But all the adjustment layers have blend modes. And all the blend mode is, is how does that adjustment layer 
work on the layers below it? How does it blend with those layers? And probably nine times out of 10, you're going to blend in a normal mode. So you're just going to leave it right where it is. The other modes all vary. Sometimes, um, it, let's say for darken, it will favor darker pixels. So if I go over that, you can see how the image gets a little bit less contrasty up in the sky. I go to darker color, go to multiply. You can see how that's making everything a little darker. Color burn, darker. Then we have a group of blend modes that will make the image a little bit lighter. It's going to favor the lighter pixels and blend it in such a way that the lighter pixels get um, providence or get prominence over the uh, darker pixels. So there's a lighter, lighter color screen. And again, you could just hover over these. There's a color dodge and so on. Then you have overlay modes and soft light modes, which kind of blend the midtones. And you could come in and see what works for you. Now I'm just going to leave this on normal and we're going to talk more about blend modes in a future episode. Then we have opacity. You don't have to apply the adjustment layer at 100%. You could tone it down if you want. And you just move it down. You could see if it's all the way down to zero, it's as though this adjustment layer isn't there at all. Now I'm going to leave it at 100. So this is our levels adjustment layer. And what you'll notice is when you add adjustment layers, this little box will open up and it will kind of give you some presets. And you could see that uh, this specific levels adjustment layers has three. The default one, which was really the uh, black level at zero, the white level at 100%, and gamma at zero. Um, those, or is gamma? Yeah, gamma at, well, I think gamma was at one. Though that is the default position. Then you have some that would, are a preset that favors it darker, would make the image a little darker. Another preset that makes the image a bit brighter. I'm not going to click on those. That's how you would turn them on because I already set this and I don't want to reset it. You could create your own preset, click right here and give it a name. And then you'll have a preset in this box that is something you specify, something you use all the time, and it will always show up. Now I'm done with levels. Another common adjustment layer we often use is the HSL adjustment layer. And I'll click on that. And you can see that we have these three presets along the bottom. It opens up with the default, which really is no adjustment whatsoever. Then desaturate, where it kind of pulls some color out of the image. And invert hue, where it's just really doing some crazy uh, color inversions to give you a very unique look. So those are the three presets that are with HSL. I'm not going to, of course, use any of those. The HSL is a very, very powerful adjustment layer. And to give you a kind of an overview, we'll start near the top with the U shift. First of all, we have the drop down. We're working on the master color channel. So basically all the colors. If you click on that drop down, you could see you could work on the reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, and magentas individually, which I most often do, or you could work on all the colors at once, the master channel. Now, as far as the hue shift, you'll see that there's a color bar going across the top, and then there's another identical color bar below it that has a slider on it. The way this works is, let's say you want to take anything that's red in the image and give it a different color. What you would do is just take the slider and put that color underneath red. So this is what is in the image, in the original image, and I'm taking anything that's red and I'm making it blue. But you can see it's blending things and because not just saturated blue, but every um, nuance of blue or any color that has a little bit of blue mixed into it's going to be a, going to be affected. So that's how you would work this. So again, if you have something in the image that is yellow, you look at the top color bar, find yellow, and let's say you want everything that is yellow red, then you would take this bar and you would move it until red is under yellow. Now you can't, sometimes you just can't shift it that far, but you can see I'm getting blue under yellow. So that's how you would adjust hue. Now I'm not gonna do that. Then we have a saturation shift. 
Now there's, as far as saturation and luminosity shifts, there's two different types of shift. Uh, the regular HSL shift is what we're doing now. And there's also this little checkbox for HSV. HSV stands for U saturation value. That's just a different way that it does these saturation shifts and it will look totally different. For example, if I take this saturation shift and move it to the right, I'm going to increase saturation, as you could see. If I click this box, you'll notice it will look different. Unclick the box, and you can see. So uh, basically what it's doing is one is kind of shifting grays, and the other one is shifting whites, and vice versa. One uh, luminosity, uh, HSL, will be making everything brighter or darker. Um, if you have HSV checked, it kind of adds black to everything. So it's just a different way that the HSL uh, adjustment layer applies the adjustment to the image. You could experiment and click on this and see if it gives you a better effect. Usually, tell you the truth, I don't. I kind of am used... This is kind of unique, by the way, to Affinity Photo. There's not many other um, applications that have an HSV option. So I'm used to the normal HSL option, and that's what I use. So again, with saturation, you move it to the right, you'd increase saturation, move it to the left, and you'd take all the color right out of the image. I'm going to reset that. Similarly, with the luminosity shift, if I move it to the right, you're just increasing luminosity. And since we're on the master channel, we're increasing the luminosity of all the colors. And if I move it to the left, we're decreasing luminosity of all the colors. And you can see we have a totally black image. So I'll reset that. Typically, how I use HSL and how many photographers do is we do it to enhance specific colors in the image. For this image, I have a lot of greens and yellows uh, with the trees, and I like to enhance that. And I have a specific way I do it. It's not totally unique to me. A lot of photographers do it this way. But I'll go to yellows, and I'll increase the saturation of the yellow a little bit and I'll bring the luminosity value of yellow up. You can see how as I, br as I bring it up, it's making anything that's yellow or has yellow in it a little brighter. And then once I do that, sometimes I'll find I'll have to bring the saturation of yellow up a bit as well, a bit more. Then what I'll do is I'll go to greens. If I could find it there. If I go, I'll go to greens and you can see how everything resets. And then with green, I'll usually leave saturation alone, but I'll take the luminosity of the saturation down. So I'm making the things that are more solid green darker, and the things that have a little more yellow in them, it's going to be green, but green that is little has a little more yellow mixed in it. I'm making that a little brighter. That gives me a little more uh, color depth to the image. So it's making my yellow green a little more yellow green and my uh, saturated darker green a little more darker and that's usually what i like to do i usually don't do any hue shifts on my images then what i'll do especially on a sky that has blue in it uh, this image of course doesn't we just have those clouds but i'll go to either the cyans or blues sometimes both but often just the blues and i'll maybe take the luminosity of the blue and i'll bring that down so I'm just making my blue sky a little darker. I usually don't add any saturation to the blue sky. And that's usually my limit of using the HSL uh, adjustment layer. But it usually works well for me. I always keep opacity at 100% and I use normal blend mode for that. So that's that. Now if we look over at our layers um, tab again, you'll see we have our background pixel layer. We have that levels adjustment layer. And then we have our U-shift our HSL shift adjustment layer. And you can see I could turn that off on. You could see the effect. I mainly affected the uh, trees and the grass. And then the levels adjustment, off, on, off, on. And you can see that um, the effects that I usually do to my images, at least using these types of adjustment layers. If you want to come back in and readjust, let's say, levels, just double-click on the actual layer itself and you'll come back up with your controls with your tr controls already adjusted and you could come in and readjust those if you'd like now 
I think we'll cover one more adjustment layer, a very simple one, one that I often will use. And I could do this in HSL, but I want to bring it up here, and that's the vibrance adjustment layer. And you can see it's super simple. It's really only one slider, and there's three presets there. There's the default, which is the vibrant slider at 0%. It's not doing anything. Simplify, which is you're pulling half of the vibrance out. You can see we're at minus 50%, and complicate where you're adding 50% of the vibrance back into the image. I'm going to reset that. The reason why I bring vibrance up, if you have a person or persons in your image, if you choose to increase saturation with the saturation slider that's found in the HSL um, adjustment layer, you might make their skin tone look too red. The vibrant slider is a better choice. It will not enhance the reds and pinks as much as it adjusts the other colors. Also, you will less be less apt to oversaturate something with the vibrant slider. So if you move it to the right, you'll bring colors to saturation, but they usually won't oversaturate. And similarly, if you bring it down, you will never be able to eliminate the color totally with the vibrant slider. You can see how there's still some color in the image. So the vibrant slider is a little less heavy-handed than the saturation slider, and it's a better choice when you have um, people in the shot so you don't mess up their skin tone. So on this image, I really didn't need it, but I just wanted to make sure I pointed it out. Um, I usually always keep it at 100% opacity and normal blend mode. Now, just to further demonstrate, if I go back to the Layers tab, and we look, we have our background pixel layer, the levels adjustment layer, our HL shift adjustment layer, and the vibrance adjustment layer, one on top of the other. If I double click on this HSL one again, and I'm in the master channel, so I'm affecting all colors. Remember, if I take saturation all the way down, I really have a black and white image. It pulls all the color out. So you can see that this is definitely more heavy handed than the vibrant slider itself. So that's why the Vibrant Slider is definitely a better choice for many situations. For landscape images, though, I think you're okay using the Saturation Slider on the Master Channel with the HSL tab or doing it like I do. Go to Yellows, Adjust Yellows, make them a little brighter and more saturated, make Greens a little darker, and then if you have Sky in your landscape image, go to Blues and bring the luminosity of blues down. You might want to do the same with cyan. That will help your blue sky as well. Pull that down. And then you're pretty well good to go as far as that HL, HSL shift adjustment is concerned. Now these are the three most common um, adjustment layers that most photographers use. I also use a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to save that one for a... Um, for a future video because there's really some specialized things you could do with curves. A lot of things people don't realize and I love the curves adjustment layers and use it a lot. So we're going to be building on this. I'm sorry I'm giving it to you in little pieces but I think this is the best way to present uh, this subject. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.